Hello everybody. What I'm about to tell you, I want you to remember this about Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau was not a marine scientist. He had no degree in marine scientist, science. He didn't go to college for marine science. He was not a marine scientist. But many of those people who teach about the oceans and the marine life of the world use his writings because he sat back and he observed. He watched what happened and he did his research. Now, I'm not a meteorolog meteorologist, nor am I an earth science scientist major or atmospheric, whatever they want to call themselves. But I do sit back and I observe and I watch. And I do some reading and studying. And what we're going to talk about is are we seeing a change within the earth? First you all got to understand one thing. We do not really have much of an effect on the atmosphere of the earth. We love to believe we do. We love to think we do. We glorify ourselves by making it so. But the truth of the matter is one average volcanic eruption has more effect on the Earth's atmosphere than the whole world industry in excess of a year. Yes, one volcanic eruption. But this isn't about that. This is about the Earth's own mechanisms. Roughly about 125 million years ago or so, the Earth was covered with water and plant life from the North Pole to the South Pole. Mm -hmm. I always ask people when they're talking about climate warming, what was going on then? Was the Earth preparing, doing a practice run? Because humans didn't exist then. And, uh, you know, we uh, couldn't cause it. It was caused strictly by the interreaction between the Earth and the Sun. And the lack of volcanic activity. But yet about 75 million years ago, somewhere around there, the Earth was covered with ice from the North Pole to the South Pole. What happened there? Well, some people say man was around then. Maybe we were. Just like one person said, we weren't smart enough yet to affect the climate with our industries. <laughs> so, what is this really about? What if we are, we're in a climate warming cycle? And now the Earth, between the sun's reaction, the organic reaction, and everything that's going on, is changing to a climate cooling cycle. Look at things that have happened. Remember that great earthquake on December 26, a couple years ago? That caused the tsunamis and caused the earth to tilt on its axis, caused the earth to change its shape, caused the earth to change the speed of its rotation. That had greatly shifted the earth. Now our atmosphere is air, but it's as fluid as any water. And if you want to see how it would affect anything, take a bucket, fill about half fill and Tilt it. See what happens to the water. It will move and conform to the shape. But in that movement, it will cause things to change. Now, what if we are changing right now from climate warming to climate cooling? Will that be a smooth, tranquil transition on the Earth? 
But I want you to think about this for a second. When has the Earth, whenever it did any type of changing, done a smooth, tranquil transition? Never. It was catastrophic for whatever life forms that were on the planet at that time. Because it's not a smooth transition. It's a very violent, atmospheric change. Starts slow and it gets more violent and more violent until it stabilizes in the direction that it's going, and then that trend stays for a while. <clears throat> and if we're seeing a global cooling right now, this is what I would expect to see in the atmosphere violent storms, a shift of weather patterns. A change in temperatures. But you got to do a little more research. The best thing to do is simply draw a line between New York and Seattle. Straight line. See what's going on north of that line. Because remember, that is basically where the glacier line was. If that is having a major negative temperature effect, then we could very well strongly be in a cooling cycle. And that would greatly affect below that line because that air will be cooler, colder, stronger, mixing in with the warmer tropical air and when it mixes in it will slowly cool down the warmer tropical air but it will be fighting the tropical air will be fighting this change now remember I told you the atmosphere is fluid like water if you really want to get an idea of what's happening get about I think it's about a, I forget it's like a five gallon tub. It's about two feet deep. It's about three feet round. And start spinning the water in one direction. If you want to put a few objects in there, like rocks or something, and see how the water is affected as it goes around those objects, you will see that there'll be mini whirlpools, which if it was in the air, they be called, could be called me, dust busters or little tornadoes. But you'll see many whirlpools going around the objects. Get the water going in one direction quite well. Now you got the water going very, very strongly in one direction quite well. And you look at what's going on. That's global warming. Now we're going to do some global cooling. You go in there and start turning the water in the reverse direction. Look what happens. Look at the traumatic effect, the violent reaction the water has to you turning everything. First, it has the resistance that you're going to be. But as you start forcing it to go in a reverse direction, you're going to see all kinds of whirlpools, all kinds of masses. A catastrophic effect upon that water. That's how global cooling will affect atmosphere I'm not saying for sure we're in global cooling but a couple of years ago when everyone's yelling global warming oh the world we're gonna cook ourselves and I said don't worry about global warming that's not something to worry about are we prepared to handle global cooling the shift is very very violent once the shift is done, then the temperature will steadily drop. You'll be getting cooler and cooler, and then once the shift gets done, then the weather gets a little more tranquil, and the temperatures will steadily drop. But until that shift is done, and it stabilizes a little bit, we're going to have a very, very violent atmosphere, basically fighting against itself. Just like when you had the water spinning in that tub in one direction around those rocks, bricks, or whatever you put in there. 
that protruded out, and then you reversed it. The water is going to fight it. The atmosphere is going to fight it. But it's going to continue on. As long as you keep rotating the opposite direction, you will eventually force the atmosphere, the water, to rotate in the reverse direction. But in that process, you will have created all kinds of disruptions to the flow of that water. We would call it atmospheric anomalies if you want, I don't care. I call it t tornadoes, hurricanes, severe thunderstorms, wind directions, all that. All that all makes us in. Remember, our atmosphere is as fluid, if not more fluid, than water. And if it doesn't maintain this fluid and this change, we will lose our atmosphere. So, bottom line, people. Are we witnessing right now the beginning of global cooling? And if we are, we're going to be having a little more problems with our atmosphere until that stabilizes. Then, as temperatures start dropping, areas on this planet to grow food are going to change. Where it rains is going to change. Where it don't rain is going to change. All these things are going to change if we are entered into global cooling. And if it's severe enough that we end up building glaciers where there never was glaciers, we might be able to walk the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. You know that uh, stone uh, road that they talk about that's off of Cuba underwater? It might be at the surface. Because a lot of the water is going to be tied up between the North Pole, South Pole, Canada, Russia, might even be Australia, have ice glaciers on it. Tip of Africa, tip of South America, the under glaciers. It could happen, people, with global cooling. Just think about that. So before you all jump to any conclusions about global warming, I think what you might be seeing is just the opposite. Now you don't have to take my word on any of this at all if you don't want to, because I'm an average everyday person with a little bit above average IQ. Well, actually a lot above. I like to watch things and observe things and I try to figure out what goes on here and there. Now, we may not be in global cooling in that case. Thank God for that. But if we are, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. A lot worse. So, bottom line. you all been yelling about global warming, global warming, global warming. And I ask you this one question. Are you all prepared to handle global cooling? It does happen. And don't think we have any control over which way it goes. I mean, we like to think we do, but the truth is we have as much control on our atmosphere as the fishes in the ocean. Our effect on the atmosphere is as great as all the animals on the planet does. You could bind the fishes in the ocean, the animals on the planet, us and all our industry together, and we do not even measure close to what one average volcanic eruption does to our atmosphere. Think about that. How insignificant to the Earth we really are. And if you don't believe me, turn the news on. You can get all kinds of pictures of how we really don't matter when it comes to the Earth and its atmosphere. Because Mother Earth just showed us a terrible thing, how powerful she can be. So, we have to sit back and think, recalculate everything, re-examine everything, and we may be headed towards global cooling. I hope not.
But if we are, a lot more turbulent atmospheric conditions will exist for a while. Thank you. This is JD. Yes, I am a presidential candidate for the next election. And that's going to be your decision. Someone who's going to be there looks at things and say, well, is this possible? Or is that possible? Can this happen? Can that happen? And I'm not going to gather around some liberal group that wants to push an agenda. Because that's not what the government's about. The government is about you, the people. To me, you are what matters. And that's what the government should be saying. Thank you for your time. And think about this. Like I said, is it global cooling that we're beginning to see? Between the combination of that earthquake that happened on December 26, several years ago, the changing of the earth, the changing shape of the earth, the changing of his axis, the changing of the rotation, and now are we headed towards a global cooling? Or is it that we had so many volcanic eruptions in the last year, year and a half, that temperatures are being changed and causing the atmosphere to change? A lot of things going on. But man likes to make himself so important and claim it's him. But it's not. I'm sorry, people. The earth is not the center of the universe. The sun is. For you people who have an education, you understand what I'm saying. For others, ask someone. But I'll explain it real quick. At one time, years upon years ago, they thought the earth was the center of the universe because man was so important. And God created man, therefore he created everything. The earth had to be the center of all the universe because man is so important. Well, it turns out man is not so important. He's actually insignificant to the universe. He's insignificant to all creations. He's even insignificant to Earth. He's only significant to within himself. Unfortunately, a lot of people are too dumb to understand that. You all have a nice day. Thank you. This is J.D., presidential candidate for the upcoming presidential election. If you decide.